Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the 8020 BIM channel. Today I want to show you how you can take a civil 3D TIN surface or a similar surface such as what's on screen here and bring it into the Revit environment so that you can actually have an accurate surface and correct geolocation of your model within its site context. Okay, so um, this is actually the second part of kind of a three part mini series. The first part I will leave in the cards and a link down below um, for you to go and watch that first, which goes through how to take a, let's say, a LiDAR Excel point document, um, which is basically just data points for, for, for elevations and nordings and eastings of points and convert them into a, an actual topographical map in Civil 3D. Okay, so that's the first step of this process. I'd advise you to go watch that if it's of interest. If you're only specifically looking to take the surface into Revit, then this is the video for you, okay? Um, as always, all the resources are in the first link down below if you want to go and grab them for yourself. On the second link is the Discord community channel. We welcome you over there if you have any questions at all. I'm not a civil 3D expert, but I'll do my best to help you, but I do know a fair chunk about Revit, at least. Um, and finally, I hope you get value from this. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. If you do, let the algorithm gods know that this is valuable to you. And uh, yeah, I won't delay anymore. Let's get into it. So for step one, we want to export our Civil 3D service that we see on the screen there to an AutoCAD format. Now, this isn't a very detailed process because Civil 3D is just a vertical of AutoCAD anyway. OK, so what we're going to do is you're just going to go up to the file menu in the top left corner. We're going to go to the drop down and press export. OK, from there, we're going to select export Civil 3D drawing. OK, in the export to file type, we can select AutoCAD DWG or DGN. Obviously, we're working in, in standard CAD, so we're going to press DWG. We could say current view only, current drawing only. We don't have any other drawings to include in this, so we don't have to worry about that. We can define export settings if we wish here. OK, and um, so I'm going to say DWG version 2013 here. I'm just going to press OK. And um, we can decide and name prefix and suffix. So because we're going from a civil 3D file, it's going to call it ACAD dash. And that means it's basically the AutoCAD version of the Civil 3D output. OK, we can include sheets or not. There's no sheets here. I'm just going to leave it ticked for the moment. And you can see that we have our file here ready for um, for export. OK, so I'm just going to press export. We're going to wait. It's going to say three files are exporting. And the reason three files are exporting is because I never turned off sheets and it's, it's creating layouts for it to be exported as well. OK. So I can press OK, knowing all three have been exported. I can go into my file here, OK? Um, and I can go to, sorry, one moment, my desktop. And you can see that we have ACAD 8020 BIM sample surface model, OK? And then we've got model, layout one, layout two. In this instance, I'm just going to delete the two layouts because we don't need them. But that's as straightforward as it is to export the CAD file from Civil 3D, OK? So that was step one, how to export a CAD file from Civil 3D. So step two is how you can link the surface into your Revit environment, okay? So going to this blank Revit model here now, we've got level one. So this is a generic architectural template here. There's nothing special about this. So I'm just going to go to site, okay? And what we're going to do in this instance is we're going to go to link. Um, sorry, insert, apologies. We're going to go to link Revit. Nope, link CAD. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, we're going to go to desktop. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to select our sample surface model. OK, so we're not going to use current view only because we actually want the 3D data to be appended to in, in all views. OK, on the colors, I'm going to keep preserve um, on layers. I'm just going to keep all on import units. I'm going to use meter because I know that my survey was undertaken in meter positioning origin to origin, center to center. It's 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 six of one because we're going to acquire the coordinates afterwards. OK, so I'm just going to leave it origin to origin. And I'm going to place at level zero. OK, orient to view. I can turn that on and off. So I'm just going to turn that on for the moment. And that will mean that the project north and the north are going to be aligned. And I'm going to press open. OK, and you can see down here, something's after coming into the fray. And here we are with our surface in Revit. OK, going to a 3D view, you can see that we have the surface also visible. And you can see that the contours are graded to the elevations respectively. OK, so that was step two how to link the surface into Revit. So step three is how to apply a Revit topo surface to the surface that we've linked into the file. OK, so again, you can see that if I go to uh, the, the site view there, we can see our boundary and our um, our overall topography. 
And what I'm going to do in this instance is I'm going to go to masking on site and I'm going to select topo surface. Okay. And typically in the topo surface dialog, you can place points for manual creation. Okay. Or you can simplify a surface, but you can see here that you can select import instance. Okay. And in the next video, we're going to discuss how to specify a points file. But in this instance, we're only going to use an import instance because going through Civil 3D is actually a more accurate way of bringing the information into Revit than going directly from points file into Revit. Okay. So I'm going to select an import instance. I'm going to select that file. We're going to select the level, the, the, the respective um, layers that we want. In this instance, I'm going to leave both on. Okay. And it's going to press OK. And Revit will take a moment to generate. But now you can see all of the points that Revit's after generating, okay? And there's a total of over 10,000 points there, okay? So um, now a lot of them are very dense, but you get the idea, okay? And when we go to a 3D view now, okay, you will see that we have a few outliers. Now you will notice that Revit didn't, uh, sorry, um, not Revit, Civil 3D didn't have these outliers, okay? And the reason for this is because we have points that have now went to the boundary condition and are applied to layer zero, to, to, to level zero, okay? So what these are, these are boundary points. And I could basically just go ahead and to be quite honest with you, we can delete them because they're so innumerous. There's only nine points and one 10,000. So, you know, we're, we're, we're on a 0.01% degree of accuracy here. So I'm just going to delete those points, okay? And now you can see that we have a surface that is the correct elevation above the, uh, the 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 floor plane okay so now that we've actually brought everything in okay and we have um created our own surface so again i, I could actually even hide the, the the cad link there and you can see that this is purely a revit surface um in the next point i'm going to go through how you can make sure that you've acquired the, the ordnance system from the cad file okay so step four how to acquire the coordinate system from the CAD file to ensure that your Revit topography is correctly placed in real world terms. Okay, so looking at our file here now, okay, I'm going to select the CAD file and you can see that in the properties dialog under shared site, we have not shared. Okay, and this is a very simple procedure. When we select not shared, we will be asked to either publish the coordinates or acquire the coordinates. And if you're not familiar with Revit, Revit coordinate system, when you publish coordinates to a link, you push your parent model coordinates, aka the model you're in, onto the link and you save the link in a new location. In this instance, we want to acquire the coordinates from the link. So what we're going to do is we're going to select acquire. This is going to tell our model that we're in to take the coordinate system from the file that has been linked in. Okay. We're going to press reconcile. Okay. And then we can basically go and we can take a spot coordinate. Okay. And as you can see, we have Eastings and Nordings in line with the Eastings and Nordings that we had in our document. Now, if you're looking, these are three points to the, um, to, these are showing three points of accuracy, maybe more than they should. Okay. Cause we should be in meters. So we can actually change that, um, reporting value there to the unit format. We can use meters instead. Okay, and we can give it a decimal place of three points if we wish. Press apply, and you can see now that that's rectifying some of that. Okay, so that was step four on how to acquire the coordinates from the AutoCAD link so that your Revit environment is correctly geopositioned, let's say. Finally, step five is to show how this surface works as a normal surface in Revit. Okay, so going to our um, manage links dialog there, I'm going to select our CAD format. And I'm going to unload that and press OK. And I'm going to just go to a 3D view here. OK, uh, we can select our surface here and on our material, we can apply our grass material, let's say. Uh, earth, maybe. There we go. So we can apply the earth material. OK. And then we can go to our masking and site tools here and we could use the likes of our subregions. Okay. And, you know, let's just say I want to show some sort of potential development in this space here. And I can finish that. And you can see that that's actually hovering 
Okay, so I drew in 3D space there. So what that's after doing is offsetting. What I should have been actually doing is looking top down. Okay, I'm going to edit the boundary of that. I'm going to migrate that down. And I'm going to press OK. And then we can change that to, for want of a better material, I'm just going to select concrete for the moment. Okay. And you can see that we can start subdividing the surface into um, materials. And, you know, from here in the early project development, you could definitely use this surface to put down a building pad to make a few edits to the proposed, the, the existing surface so that you can show an early development proposal, let's say. Um, and you're building contextually correct in, in place. And then once you get a full survey in, let's say that's not a LiDAR-based survey, you can then develop your civil 3D model accordingly and then bring that surface directly in of the finalized, kind of the finished product. And you know that everything is to correct ordinance and everything. Okay, so that was step five, which was essentially just to show you that this surface works as a Revit surface properly. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. In the next tutorial video, it's going to be a very quick one. It's just going to show how you can acquire um, or generate the surface directly from the points file, the Excel points file, let's say, in Revit. Um, as always, I'm Niles 8020 BIM. All these resources are available down below in the first link. Go ahead and grab them if you're after them. And uh, go to the second link there if you want to join the Discord community. If you have any questions, that's the best place to field it because that's where I'm most likely to respond. And there's other helpful people there who are, who are very, very uh, pleasant to deal with. Okay. So, as always, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found value. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you for the next one. Take care now. Bye-bye.